Tom here from Orange Systems, and yesterday I did a video kind of walking you through the studio, and I said if enough people had commented, and several of you did, were asking what is the workflow for processing all the video that you create. And that workflow starts with this little stream deck right here, and the record button, which you can see kind of glowing down there at the bottom. Now I bring that up because this is all part of the process and flow. First, you know, have all the cameras set up, have an idea in your head, get ready to talk to the camera about the said idea, press record, and then switch between the different views if that's necessary. And OBS Streamlabs has been a great help in that because the goal is to minimize the amount of editing time. To minimize the amount of editing time, one, don't screw up so you have to edit that out. Two, be able to switch seamlessly to talking about things like your March 21 studio tour and the parts list if you want to know all the pieces and components. Um, but now, of course, we have to talk about the software because that's the other side of the processing. And Streamlabs is just one of those tools that once I found, like I said, it's really made my workflow so much easier. I used to in the earlier days, and this is still what a lot of people do, and you will still get the highest level of quality by doing this. Take and record to, let's say, an SD card or some type of high and input, input device for each one of your feeds. This means the overhead camera. So if I want to do an overhead shot with this weird thing that got 3D printed with the legs that is, as far as I'm concerned, from Alien, or even this cool thing here, you want to present a product or zoom in with the overhead camera and take a close look at this. And like, that is just really intricate and cool. And uh, yeah, neat. Anyways, distracting. But you want to have all these feeds normally at the highest quality and you'll ingest them all and then you line up and find the audio alignment between all of them. That way all the different camera angles align. That's a lot of work. Now, one thing to note that if I started doing this and forgot to switch to the overhead, now I forgot to switch to the overhead because there's only one track being produced. I bring this up that way when I bring you to the software editing process, you can watch that one track being produced and you'll see how these just seamlessly switch between each one of the different inputs on here. Now, functional things that go on behind the scenes. The computer, the Windows dedicated computer that this is physically attached to. And if you watch the studio tour, there's a TV on the other side of the camera. So I can line things up, set things up with Streamlabs OBS, make sure I see all the inputs to make sure the inputs are switching to, so I know which one I'm switched to. Also, this computer just has a smaller hard drive in it. This file being created is then immediately synchronized using a tool called SyncThing. Done several videos on it. Sync thing brings the video data over to my main editing computer and more or less my main workstation in the office that is running Linux and I run Caden Live. I will link to the video for all the details and specs of that particular computer because that question comes up a lot, but I made a separate video for that. Now, it also synchronizes and my other part of the workflow is it's headed over to, and it's right now physically sitting behind me. Normally it's in the rack, but I switch which one I use. But TrueNAS has been kind of the heart of it for my storage server for all of my videos for quite a while. The TrueNAS system is easy to set up. I've got plenty of videos on that uh, with SyncThing, and therefore all the data is being replicated. Now, as soon as I hit stop on the record right here, that file gets written out and stops, you know, accumulating data. And that's when the sync immediately happens, which is nice. It only takes a few minutes, generally, depending on how long of a video I do to get the data synchronized. And I bring it up as the true NAS because someone will point out when they watch the specs video, Tom, you only have an MVME in there and you only have it one TB. That's not enough to do video editing. It is not. That's why I actually have my TrueNAS as the back end for video editing and all of my video storage. You got to store it somewhere and storing it on a single drive as well. Doesn't offer much resiliency in case of a failure and does not offer um, much in a way of storage. And rather than ramp up the storage on my one single computer, I just ramp it up to that system that's sitting behind me right now. And uh, I have a view review I did of the TrueNAS Mini. I'll leave if you're interested. All right. I think I've got enough footage that I can switch between show the overhead, show the laptop. Oh, the laptop and each one of these is going just to a different stream. There's a cable attached to this. I have black tape on it in case someone's wearing because it's just so white. I lost, or I don't know that I lost it, but um, 
Okay, maybe I did. I don't know where the adapter is that was black, and uh, the only other one I could find available at the time was white, so uh, that's why that's like that. But this cable goes around the table, as I show in my studio store, and this laptop pretty much sits here uh, on the studio, but occasionally you'll see a different one. Not that it matters much, but whatever I'm using, whatever device for an input, I have a couple different options that I can do uh, that all come into the stream server. But let's get to the softer side and showing you how I bring everything in with Caden Live and the editing process that I use for that. All right, so now I'm over here in my office and I'm gonna fire up Caden Live and start editing. Of note, Caden Live does have a Windows version. I have not used it. Some people said it used to crash a lot. Some people said it's been more stable. I don't test it in Windows. I only use it in Linux. Therefore, I'm really not sure and really can't help to answer any questions on it. I've been running Linux on my desktop for almost 10 years, maybe longer. I'd have to try to remember exactly when I started, but uh, Caden Live, I started with a long time ago and it used to crash a lot even on Linux. It has become dramatically more stable. And matter of fact, it rarely, if ever, crashes on me during my video editing process. Now, I am not an expert at Caden Live, and I only use the functions I need to get my job done. You can check around. There's a few YouTube channels that really dive deep into some of the way more advanced features that, well, I just don't use, uh, but I'm always wowed by when I see the capabilities that Caden Live has, but the features I use don't cause it to crash. Doesn't mean you won't find some edge case where, hey, it crashes when I try to do this really fancy, intricate thing that I may not do for my editing work. All right, now the next thing I have to display is a little bit tricky because this is normally how I see things. You have the project window over there in the center window. I have my you know layouts and everything that you can see. So where uh, you can see where all the edits are and where I drag things around. But what you're missing is, um, it's just kind of hard to present this way. I'm gonna narrow it down because it's hard to see everything in this you know, a triple screen version that I edit. The other thing that you're seeing over here on this screen, I believe it's on this side now for the way, yeah, I got to say everything in reverse. So when you're looking at this screen over here, uh, this is how I add all the timestamps to the video. So this is what I see when I'm editing, but to consolidate and actually show you how the edit works, I'm gonna move this down to one screen. Cool thing about Caden Live is all the different layout options. Matter of fact, you can do this layout. You can go here to view load layout editing, view low layout, and I've got a couple custom ones, LTS normal and LTS one screen. And one screen is condensed everything down to one place. So let's go ahead and use that because this is just way easier to see me edit on one spot. All right. Now, kind of the basics of the way the editing works is, well, you can see in this particular video, there were no cuts. So everything is just one long piece until the cuts that come over here, which is when I switch to my phone. So this is actually the phone view. This is from the studio video that you may or may not have watched before this one. And other than a couple cutouts where I forgot the word for whatever that was, and uh, I think it was when I was pointing at the flange, there's not too many cuts in this particular one other than when I cut back to me in studio, cut back to me talking in here again, and then throw on an end roll. But let's go ahead and start this over as a new video and show you how I drag in the files. One quick thing before I drag these files in. This is called Template 2021 Caden Live. What this is, is a template that I made, really simple. I just literally have a color clip that makes it green in the back. I have this little animation that is my... Uh, higher or connect with us that you've seen at the bottom when it first starts out in the video. And I threw it over the top of green. I bring this up because the way templating works in Caden Live is a little interesting, or at least the way I understand it, is right here we have this template.cadenLive file and all it does is produce this. So if I hit play on it, you'll watch things kind of fade in and it puts Lawrence Systems on there. There is not a good title animator for Caden Live, I pull this in externally. I've created this with a little tool on my phone just to say hire us or connect with us at lawrencesystems.com, and that's it. Really simple, really basic uh, video, and I crop it down to be that size. That's nothing special about that. But once you have this saved as a file, and we're gonna say, no, we don't wanna save the changes or whatever, I goofed up with it, you can just drag in the template.cadenlive. You can actually save something as a Caden Live, the editor's extension for editing video, uh, like the file it creates the project file, and drag it in, and it imports all those assets as one file. And why I bring that up is because I have one more asset to drag in, is the end roll. Here's the rendered end roll. 
So now we've taken the end roll that I drag at the end of the videos. We have this that's kind of a front or pre-roll. And now we can go over and we'll look and grab the capture. Now, depending on what I'm doing, will I rename these files? If there's multiple ones, yes. If not, I'm usually kind of lazy and I'll leave them just the name of whatever they are. So this one is named automatically 2021-37-1122-07. It just gives it the timestamp of when the video started. Um, but I can tell already by looking at it, it doesn't actually start till here. So this is me probably staring blankly at the camera. Yep, I'm just staring at it. <clears throat> I clear my throat and make sure it's in focus. I'm just kind of making sure everything's right. I'm prepared before I start talking. And then I say probably, Tom here from Warren Systems. Systems. Tom here from Warren Systems. All right. So that's actually where the video starts. We're going to go ahead and trim here. Now, what I'm doing as far as keys is this is, you watch these. I'm either hitting the razor tool X or the selection tool. And you can hit S and X for those just switch back and forth. It's only real keys. You can actually map everything to different keys. I only really use those. So now I'll zoom out. I'm just holding control in the zoom. Let's go over here, press home, and uh, it brings me right back to the very beginning of it. Now let's go ahead and drag this in and put this over the top. So now we'll, we'll watch the project more monitor. More systems. systems. And yesterday, yesterday I and obviously that's not going to work. It's just green over there. So we go to effects. I hit chroma because we have it set as a chroma key. There's an advanced and basic chroma key, so I drag that there, grab the color. I just know it works better at 250. If not, you'll get a little green edge around there. That's just like the variance between the colors because it fades in, that actually fixes the fade. And now that's it. Now you can see it's perfectly overlaid, it drops in, and then I can go and start editing the rest of the video. Now I'd mentioned everything being one stream. This is important because now from an editing standpoint, I go through here, I look for any gaps, but you notice I'm switching between all the different inputs. So there's very little editing I have to do. This is just gonna go through, I've cut between everything. Now occasionally I leave a gap. And what that gap is for is for me to edit something out and I just pause and I look for those gaps or on some occasion when I'm letting something load, there's that same gap that may occur. So we're actually going to save this one and show you what happens when there's a gap in a video. Now, this is a video I just did the other day for PF Sense and how to do DNS host overrides. And there was a part here where I was digging through commands. Let me actually make the video a little bigger, but I'm not talking and you can see the little gap. So I... I stop now, here. Now, let's get over, get over something wrong. I just said something wrong, so I paused. Let's cover, let's cover something, something really, really quick. quick. And I wanted to say, let's cover something really quick. So we go here. Let's get over, get over something wrong. Yep, I just completely mumbled that. So I just go clip, clip, clip. Then let's see how it sounds now. Let's cover let's something, something really, really quick. quick. This is OpenSS. Now, that may be what they refer to as a jump cut. There is an easy way if you don't want it to be quite so jumpy as you can drag the clips over each other really quick there and just click wipe. And all you are doing is clicking the corner right there and it automatically adds a wipe. And like I said, I'm just holding control and the scroll wheel to be able to do this. So now instead of me jumping and it's small, so it's going to be hard now, to see. Let's cover, let's cover something really It quick. fades smoothly over to the next transition. But a lot of times if you watch my videos, you'll see me just doing jump cuts in there, but we'll leave that one in. Now let's go ahead and scroll down. I know there's another gap over here. I think something was loading in one of them. Or sometimes I'm typing really slow. Right here, I typed really slow. Let's talk about what to do when Tom types really slow, but you know, I don't want to stop showing you what I'm typing. We go over here in Caden Live and we'll go at the beginning of Tom typing slow. Here's the end, I believe, of me typing slow. Yep. So I need to show what's going on so you can know how I got to where I was, but me typing out www, misspelling it, backspacing a couple times doesn't really add to the you know, glamour of it. So we took this video clip here. We're going to ungroup the clip. We're going to go here and I delete the audio track. The reason is because if you speed things up, you can end up with some distorted audio and it sounds weird and makes noise that completely not relevant. But we're going to go here and change speed and we'll just change it to 400%. Hit OK. That clip's nice and short now. So now when you play, and then we also want to go ahead and we're going to do www as well. 
just the pause when I stopped talking, but now it looks like I type faster. I did the typing one. It's not usually where I do it. Most of the time when I'm skipping these gaps is when something's loading, especially when you have a loading bar, if I'm doing a tutorial in that, where you get this long percentage going across because it's going to take a while to download something. I'll let it download. I may even leave the office while it does it if it's going to be a while, but I'll let it stay recording. And then I'll take that clip and speed it up by whatever percentage I need to make that work. And this is another gap that I created in there when I was uh, having to refresh and wait for the cache to expire. Same thing, I can just show you what I did by kind of skipping through it real fast and changing the speed. Now back to the other video, let's switch back to it. Not gonna save this one. And there's really nothing to edit out. I did this all in one take. This is the beginning of the video you're watching. I can't show you the end because I'm recording it right now and until I'm done recording it and dragging it in there, that's, you know, that's that part. But for the most part, I'm gonna take this. This is gonna get towards the end. I see where I stopped right here, and then it will cut this off. And then I'm gonna drag in the next clip once I hit save on this and start pulling it in and continuing with the video. Now, once all this is done, there is one more tool that I use that I will bring up. And this is uh, me torturing myself is kind of what I joke about here. It's thumbnail creation. I frequently create the thumbnails by snapping a picture or just grabbing a screen, but yes, I do use GIMP for this. I am by far not the expert to ask on how to use GIMP. I've gotten good enough at GIMP to use it to do the things I do. And if you see over here, how I get logos into it. You can actually copy and paste things right out of websites into it, which I do, but uh, I have a lot of logos already saved in here. So if I needed to, drag in the PF Sense logo, the TrueNAS logo, um, set different things. It's pretty easy for me to just have all the layers. I've got a handful of them named in here on the side. You can also, and as I mentioned, if you go here and I go to, I see an image I may want out of there, you can just copy and paste into it. It actually works surprisingly well and just edit, paste, and then these are how I build my thumbnails. That's the only last real part of the video editing process is building the thumbnails. Obviously, it's it's different tools you can use for it. Um, I used to do a lot of work in Photoshop. I won't argue with anyone who tells me that Photoshop is superior because I still agree with them. I just didn't want to have to run any Photoshop anymore. So I took the time and watched a bunch of random YouTube videos that no, I don't have a list of. But if you type in GIMP tutorial on how to do something in YouTube, you will find a lot of people who have GIMP tutorials on how to do things in YouTube. YouTube. Now, once all this is said and done, we'll switch back over to the studio video real quick, just because it's complete. We just hit render, and how long does it take to render? And I don't want to overwrite this one, so let's put an X or a test after it. Now, this particular video for the studio video is about 24 minutes long, and uh, how long does Caden Live take to render? Well, that's going to be back to me referencing what computer do I use to do this. It is a AMD processor. And like I said, I'll leave a, a link to the video where I have all the details of that uh, particular system or this particular system, I should say. I render them all out in MP4. You click the more options in Caden Live. Make sure you're using as many encoder threads as possible. But these are the settings if you want to stare at the screen and see exactly what I do to render this. Now, this 20 four minute video, hit render, Let's see how long it takes. It'll give you a reasonable estimate for how long it's gonna take. I see reasonable, it's not always the most accurate, but this system does have plenty of cores to throw at it. So, well, 12 cores, 24 threads. So yeah, you can watch it taking advantage of the processors. And as it goes through different sections of this video, it's gonna uh, render at different speeds. It still says waiting. It's also slowed down by the fact that I'm recording simultaneously while running everything that I also have running. So yes, if I close everything, it'll actually render a little bit faster, but it's going to take, eh, I know it takes a lot less than that. Last time I did the render on this particular video, 24 minute video roughly is going to take about 20 minutes to render. Uh, you can see it counting down faster, even with me recording and everything that I got going on. Yeah, it's rendering. The only hard part it has to render is that chroma key in the beginning slows it down. Once it gets past that, you'll see the numbers get faster. Yeah, maybe about 20 minutes to render this video. I know it renders faster than the number of minutes. So a 24 minute video, 
might take like 16 to 18 minutes to render on average, but obviously if I put a lot of transitions there, it would take longer. Uh, but that's it. This is all the tools I use to produce this content. Um, I will finish editing the other video. Last comment I will make is uh, what to do with all the old content. I actually purge a lot of it. Um, I bring that up because I used to save all of it for quite a while, and I realized I don't know why I do that. I, it, it became burdensome to keep the source of every video. I trim a lot of it out. Or sometimes, you know, I'll do something where I have one take and then because of things I have to do in between, there's another take where I finish that particular video and tie those two videos together. Those two source files are rather large and I don't, I, I don't know. I keep them usually for about six months and then I go, why do I have this and throw it all away? My archive process is keeping all of the rendered footage. That way, if I ever have to re-upload it to another site or something happens with YouTube, whatever, I have all of the finished product videos, but I just really don't find myself um, with the need to create or store, I should say, and try to recreate any of those videos. I don't think I'm going to go back to anything from 2019. And so I slowly started purging some of the older stuff and I'm trying to come up with, and I think right now, six months seems to be a good retention policy because I produce a lot of content, storing it all. If it doesn't have a purpose, I'm not sure why I want it. I don't think of too many times when I'm really digging out that I want some product shot or something I didn't use from you know a year ago. And oh, I'd like to pull that footage back up. If I liked the footage, it was in the video. If I didn't like the footage, it wasn't. I may have some exceptions where I've been on site a couple of places and I've held on to that footage longer. But most of the time, the general footage I create, I just throw away after so many months because I have the final product and that's the part that only really matters to me at the end. Uh, but like I said, I'll leave links to the other videos that I had mentioned, including the studio tour. And hopefully this was insightful. If you're looking at use Caden Live and uh, these tools, I think they're actually quite stable and work quite well on Linux. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.